on the count of three, I want every single one of you, as loud as you possibly can, to shout your name. Okay? On three, as loud as you can. One, two, three. <laughs> wow. Very good. Okay. We're going to do it again. Even louder this time. Okay? So loud that you, you scare the people outside. Okay? On three. One, two, three. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Now turn to the person next to you and find out their name. Everyone have a name? Yes? Do we all have a name? Okay. Now, on three. On three. I want you to shout as loud as you possibly can, even louder than the last two combined. I love you, followed by the name of that person. On three. On three. One, two, three. Ah, oh, music to my ears. Wonderful. Okay, now that we've warmed up, I want to tell you my story. Now, like most people, I was born, that's me there, four months old, lying on my Disney blanket. I, well, shortly after this photo, a few years, I should say, I developed a fascination for scribbling on walls. So I always loved drawing as a kid. And I would go around the house just scribbling on all the walls I could find. When I got a little bit older, I fell in love with a construction kit called Kinex. Now you can see in the photo, I started to make everything in the instruction manual and then I got bored. So I thought, why don't I improvise? And that's exactly what I did. I just started making things at random. And that's my, the start of my weightlifting career, I think, there. <laughs> this here is my first ever design project at university. Now, it was a very simple project. All I had to do was lie down on a big piece of paper, like this, and I got one of my friends to draw around the outline of my body. And the assignment was to fill in this outline in any way that we wanted. I decided to just basically copy the outline and move it inwards a few times and change the colors a little bit for no other reason than I just, honestly, I just felt like it. It, was, it wasn't really any intellectual or critical thinking behind it. But when it came to my final review, my tutor looked at my work and he looked at me and he said, why, why have you drawn it like this? I didn't know what to say, so um, I just said, the lines represent the energy centers of the body. Now, to this day, I don't know what that means, to be honest with you. I just improvised. And the interesting thing is the tutor, he kind of looked at me for a second, and then he looked at my work, and he had a little notepad, and he started writing something down. And he said, huh, okay. So that was my first ever live piece of improvisation, my first uh, 15 seconds of fame. Now while I was at university, I stumbled across this poster one day. It was just on the wall. I was walking past and it caught my eye and I decided to go and investigate it and see what, what is this about? It looks kind of interesting. I looked, I looked at the poster and I saw these two words at the top, improvised theater. Now I'd never heard of anything of that kind. I thought improvised theater. How do you improvise theatre? Theatre is scripted. You have a, a script, you memorise your lines, and then you rehearse a bunch of times and perform. How do you improvise that whole process? Is that even possible? So this got me curious, and I thought, I want to see what this is about, and I, I went to the workshop. The first game that we played was called Word Ball. Now this was a few days later. I went to this workshop just not knowing what to expect, and the workshop leader said, we're going to play a game called Word Ball. It's very simple. We're all going to get in a big circle. And I'm going to shout a word at random. And I'm going to point to someone else in the circle. Whoever I point to, you have to say the first word that comes into your head and then point to someone else. And we're just going to keep going around until I catch the word ball and we end the game. Who wants to play Word Ball with me right now? Put your hand up. Yes, in the red. Uh, can, you, can you switch on your microphone just so we can hear you? There's a green button if you press that. Can you just speak into that and test it? 
Perfect. Okay. So like I said, it's very simple. I'm going to say a word at random. Yeah, it's getting real now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to say a word at random. And then you just say the first word that comes into your head. And it's back to me. And we just keep going until I do this. And we stop. Okay? Sound good? Yeah, sounds okay. good. Let us begin. Car. Bus. Driving. Road. Fast. Slow. Slower. Faster. Pedestrian. Crossing. Zebra. Dog. <laughs> and we'll end it there. Perfect. That was perfect. Okay, now we're going to do it one more time, but as quickly as you possibly can. Okay, so just no hesitation. Just bang, 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 bang. Okay, here we go. Person. Grass. Cutting. Fast. Pace. Glue. Stick. Paper. Craft. Tree. Cut. Fast. Faster. Scissors. Slower. <laughs> okay, we'll end it there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can we have a... If you could switch your microphone off. Thank you very much. So that's one example of one of the games that we played. Uh, we went on to play a bunch of other games and it was, it was a really interesting feeling for me doing this kind of stuff. I'd never even heard of this and it just it intrigued me. I thought this is really fun and I want to keep doing this. So I kept going back every single week, week after week after week and it became an obsession of mine, improvisation. I'd go to as many as I could, I'd read about it, I'd think about it when I wasn't doing it and a few years later I was standing on stage at the world's biggest arts festival the Edinburgh Fringe. And since that first workshop, I realized I'd just completely become obsessed. I was hooked on improv. There was a moment in the show at the Fringe Festival where I basically asked the audience to shout a suggestion for a scene. And someone from the back shouted, pencil. So I accepted the suggestion. I dropped down on my knees. I picked up an imaginary pencil. And I started to scribble on the fourth wall. I'd come a long way since my uh, wall scribbling days, but not that far. Now, after I graduated, I, to be honest with you, I felt a bit lost. You know, can people relate to that, people who've graduated? Have you, after it, you kind of feel, okay, I've, I've done this whole process of going through the years. There's this point called graduation. Now that I've reached that, what do I do? I had the same dilemma. Six years of architecture school, deadline after deadline after deadline. There was always something to work towards. And then I arrived at graduation and I just, I didn't know what to do. So I decided to travel, to just run away, do something different. And being an improviser, I had an idea. I thought, what if I travel without any plan? So no planning, no itinerary, no guidebooks, no nothing. I'm just going to buy a one-way ticket somewhere and just go and see what happens. And that's what I did. I bought a one-way ticket to Prague. I volunteered at a hostel there for about two weeks. And after the two weeks were up, I kind of felt like, okay, I want to go somewhere else. So I decided to text a friend who was in Romania at the time. This is what I said to her. I said, hey, I've been exploring Prague for the last two weeks. My next stop is Bucharest, and I'm looking for accommodation there. I've heard of couch surfing, where you can crash on a local host's couch for free. Do you have any suggestions? Now, this was just a shot in the dark. I wasn't expecting anything. This is what she came back with. I have an apartment in the very center of Bucharest, next to everything. No one lives there anymore, and you can stay for as long as you want. Who does that? I mean, I was just, I was amazed. So I immediately booked my ticket one way to Bucharest. And a few days later, sure enough, I was there. I met up with my friend and we had a little tour. She gave me a little tour of, of the city center. And then we sat down for lunch in a traditional Romanian restaurant. Over lunch, I, I told her my, my dilemma. I said, I'm kind of lost at the moment. And then her phone went off, which was very unexpected. <laughs> but it was okay because then she, she didn't answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so she told me, she gave me some advice. She said, I, 
I've been in your situation. I know, I know how you feel. And these are the words of advice that I have for you. She said, in, in times of uncertainty, pause your life. Now, I didn't really understand what she meant by that, to be honest. I thought, what, pause my life? Six years of deadline after deadline? What, am I just gonna sit and do nothing? But I trusted her and she was very wise and very dear to me, so I thought, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust her and I'm gonna pause my life here in Bucharest. And that's exactly what I did. While I was pausing, I had a lot of time to think about what do I actually want to do. I was free to do absolutely anything. So I decided to do what I love and run an improvisation workshop, invite a bunch of people from all over the city to come and attend this workshop. And one of the games that we played was called One Minute Story. It was basically what you can see here, just a, a dish and a series of bits of paper. The bits of paper, I'd written suggestions for stories on them and I'd folded them up, put them in the dish, and I asked a volunteer at the workshop to come and grab a piece of paper, go up on stage, unfold it, read what it says, and improvise a story for just one minute. Now, there was a girl at the workshop who, I felt like she was very reserved. She was kind of holding back. She wasn't really, she was very careful about the way that she presented herself throughout the workshop, up until she got to this game. She put her hand up to volunteer to play and took a piece of paper from the bowl. She moved to the middle of the room where she unfolded it and read out what it said. And that was the following. Tell us a story about a time when you felt vulnerable. Now, as soon as she read that out, there was a, there was a bit of a shift in her and I could sense a shift in the room as well. She, she started to just pace back and forth a little bit and think about what she was going to say. And she ended up telling us a story about something that happened to her. She was, she was offered a job in Paris. It was an acting job. She was an actor. And it was someone who she really wanted to work with. She was really passionate about the project and really excited about the script and just couldn't wait to get started. But there was a bit of a problem. The, the filming was at the same time as the attacks in Paris. And there was a, a real climate of uncertainty and fear at the time. So she was torn between these two things. Do I go and follow this passion of mine and do this thing that I love? Or should I really be thinking about my own safety and my personal well-being? It's just, can you imagine being in that situation, just being torn in that way? Now, as she was telling this story, she was, I got the sense that she was feeling exactly what she was saying. She was really engaged and speaking her truth. There was no neediness in the way that she was being vulnerable. It's not like she was saying, this terrible thing happened to me and I want you to feel sorry for me. There was no sense of that. She was just being completely raw and putting this thing out there with no judgment and no expectation. And it had a, a profound effect on the people in the room. They, they really sensed that she was being vulnerable. And for me, just being there and experiencing that, it had a real impact on me in the way that, the way that you know, communication can be very powerful. A few months after that workshop, I received a text from a friend who was a fellow improviser in Bucharest. She told me, Esan, there is one more spot at the Train the Trainers class with our super experienced guest from the US, Joe Bill. Now, for those of you who don't know who Joe Bill is, he's basically a master improviser. He has 40 years of experience performing, coaching, working with companies, working with individuals, just you think of it, he's done it. So I jumped at this immediately and I said, yes, I want, I want to take part. I got my ticket and a few days later, I, I showed up at the workshop and it was just, it was an incredible experience. We sat in a circle, like most improv workshops, and Joe, he just, he had this energy, he had this incredible charisma. He was so likable and friendly and open and, and knowledgeable, and he combined this incredibly deep understanding of human psychology and behavior with a real empathy 
and a real sense of humanity, I think. He was very vulnerable and very raw in the way that he spoke. And it had a real, a real impact on me sitting there and, and speaking with him and, and learning from his experience. Now, after the workshop, Joe said that he's hungry and wants to get some food. So I just offhand said, do you mind if I join you? And he said, sure, come on, yeah, let's, let's get some lunch. And there I was, sitting, having lunch with Joe Bill, this incredible improviser, and I was just shocked by how incredibly open and honest and vulnerable he was with me, who he'd just met that day. He was opening up and telling me things about himself. And again, similar to the girl in the, the workshop with One Minute Story, there was no neediness in the way that she was presenting it. She was just, he was saying, this is my childhood, this is what happened to me, and this is who I am now. There was an incredible sense of understanding and acceptance, and it had a real, a real impact on me, being with Joe. Now, when I told you at the beginning that I started off scribbling on walls with, with pencils, I've kind of given up that habit now. I've, I've taken to scribbling into my notepad, and you can see some, uh, some examples. These are notes that I took before I started creating this, this PowerPoint and this workshop. And I wanted to basically capture everything that I've ever learned about improvisation from workshops, from mentors, from tutors, from performing at festivals, from reading about it, all this stuff. I wanted to condense it all down into just one sentence. So, that's just an extract. Imagine taking all of that, condensing it all down into just one sentence. I think I've managed to do it. And this, this is what I've come up with. So everything I've ever learned about improvisation, I've got it down to two words, okay? Two words. Everything I've ever learned. Are you ready for this? Okay, here we go. Don't try. Yeah, it, it seems overly simplistic, but that's exactly what I think captures everything that I've learned. Uh, I spent the whole time when I was writing this thing trying and trying and trying to get to this sentence, but it was staring me in the face the whole time. Don't try to say the right thing. Don't try to make something happen. And don't try to hide your vulnerability. Thank you. <laughs>